Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad that for everyone who knows Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, an eternal life that is found in Him, we can say it is well with my soul. And if it is not well with your soul this evening, I want to tell you the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be, my friend. There's a number on the bottom of the screen. We would encourage you to call that number. There are people who are waiting not only to lead you to Christ, but if you do know Christ and you are walking through the midst of, of, uh, of an ash heap and you're trusting God to bring beauty from out of those ashes, just like he did for Chad Conley, I want to tell you there are people who are ready and willing and, and desiring to pray with you here this evening. Chad, I just uh, feel like that I'd be missing the mark if I did not give you the privilege of introducing our next guest here on Nightline tonight. Would you yes. do us that? I would be honored to do that. And um, this is the miracle lady that came into my life. Uh, at a time when God turned me around and woke me up and my friends were doing everything they could, uh, but this is who I prayed for. And uh, there's no question about it. I was the most sobbing, most desperate person I'd ever met. But I knew I could not live in, I could not stay in the negative, and I believe God ordains I move on. I knew my boys deserved it, and here's who God sent me. Chad, how many, <clears throat> how many of those uh, sweet little old women down at the church, <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from the women's military union, I mean missionary union, <laughs> yeah. uh, from, from the, uh, from the uh, casserole brigade, <laughs> who uh, would come up to you from time to time after, after church and, uh, and say, Chad, I've got a niece, <laughs> or, uh, or my next door neighbor has a daughter. And Chad, with all due respect, you probably wouldn't have said this, but I can see you <laughs> thinking, well, what does she look like? <laughs> And uh, sort of like the old Andy Griffith, well, she's nice. She's real nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, all that aside, and listen, if it bothers you that we're having fun tonight, <laughs> you need to very gradually get over it. Because as saved people, as saved people, we do have, we do have some, some, some uh, tragic times. But I want to tell you, he gives... He gives uh, the oil of gladness for the, the garment of heaviness. And, and He puts pep back in your step. And He gives us abundant life. Forgive me for preaching for a minute. But uh, what was it like for the Holy Spirit of God who lives inside of you to, uh, to do some matchmaking for you? Because God said it's not good for man to be alone. Who are some of the people, and, and what did, tell me that. I'm really, really yeah, I, curious. i got to tell you this story because there's no doubt I, I outkicked my punk coverage. You don't have to look at her long and you think, does she have eye trouble? I mean, what's the deal As here? a friend of mine says, She's gorgeous. I, you married above yourself. Yes, sir. I uh, hear that all the time. I, I did. I outkicked my punk coverage badly. But <laughs> um, I'm on the board at Palmetto Family Council, which is the focus group in the South Carolina. And dear friends, you know, people just loved on me and took care of me. And, and one of them in particular, a couple in particular, J.D. and Nancy Martin from here in Greenville, uh, came up to me at the first board meeting I went back to, which must have been November, and uh, they did this for a couple months, but that one was important because it was really the first thing I'd really gone to. And they came up and said, you know, okay, when you're ready, have we got a girl you need to meet? And I'm like, ah, man, leave me alone. I'm, I am not there yet. And, and this went on for the couple times it happened, and the second time it was kind of the back slap, and okay, you're Mr. Positive, we've seen you speak, and you can't live in the negative, and when you're ready, uh, you know, give me some time. Went back to the January board meeting. Uh -huh. Remember, I'd written my blessings out. I had been praying three prayers. New Lord, Year's Eve. Uh, yep, New Year's Eve. I wrote three prayers out. Lord, astound me. I'm not going to go looking. Number two, Lord, send me somebody who won't be threatened by my wife's memory, but help me honor that to my children. And number three, Lord, you're going to have to send me somebody that doesn't have divided loyalties. I didn't want a guy looking over the shoulder kind of sure. thing. I, I didn't really think through what that meant, but those were my three prayers. And they came out of the books I read and out of the word I'd gotten and felt like that was, okay, I'm just going to focus on this, Lord. And I went to the January board meeting, and J.D. and Nancy were just precious. And, you know, basically said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> you know, and no more sulking. It's time to move on. And we got a girl we need to meet. I said, okay, what's her name? And they said, Dana. 
I said, well, how'd she get single? And they said the same way you did, to which I went, oh, you're kidding. I said, just for the record, I'm a little cynical that two widows from suicide can make this work. He said, well, you need to get your tail out of the house anyway. You know, and I'm, you're right. I need to, I need to go out. And he that's, said, a, that's a good tender word. That's a great tender get word. Get tail out of the right. house. They love it on me. Amen. And, uh, I said, okay, you're right. I, I, I'd love to go out with her. And he said, we'll do a double date. And Nancy arranged it. And sure enough, I think a week later, uh, they put us together in a blind, my first in my life, blind double date. Huh. I met her here in Greenville. Well, praise the Lord. I have uh, a lot of questions that I just cannot wait to ask you, Dana, especially since you told me you really didn't want me to ask you a lot of questions. <laughs> but uh, it's real easy for, for folks on the outside to look at a couple who's laughing, who's smiling, and, uh, and to say they've always been that way. When I know and you know and we all know, uh, while, while it, it won't rain always, we don't laugh always. And uh, I just want to come back in, in just a few minutes after a short break and talk about how God personally brought some beauty back into your life. Uh, Dana, I'll never ever forget having uh, known your, your parents and, and uh, maybe had just met you very briefly out and about at church services and one thing or the other, seeing you and your children at a department store mm -hmm. in Greer just a few weeks after you walked through a place that I hope and pray I'll never have to walk through, but by the grace of God. And you know what I remember thinking? You can just see the heartbreak all over her. But I want to tell you tonight, to the glory of God, as I sit here right beside you and your husband, I can see the happiness Amen. all over you. And we're going to give you the opportunity to minister to some folks here this evening who are watching, who uh, maybe they didn't go through exactly what you've gone through, but they're going through something else. I heard Karen Wheaton say one time that the day her divorce was final, she went back home, and, and, and she had the divorce through no choice of her own. She went back home. And I remember she said that if it had been a death in the family, there would have been uh, potato salad and green beans all over the house. But because it was a divorce, there was nobody there. I want you to come back in just a minute and talk a little bit about the ministry of presence. Would you be willing to do that? Yes, I'm glad to. I sure do appreciate you coming on. Uh, you have, you have uh, your kids here right. tonight, don't you? Mm -hmm, we do. Let's all be, be still and quiet. <laughs> I know. We'll be here. I hear, them. I hear those kids coming. They're coming around the bend. And, and they'll be in here in just a little while. And we want to introduce them to the Nightline audience. Chad, very quickly, in about 45 seconds, uh, what is your message to the church? Mm in ministering to hurting people. Mm. You know, I think my message is just be there for them. I, you know, people came out in so many different ways and helped me and loved on me. I, ways I can't even count, and I think it was just their presence. They just showed up. They showed up when I was expecting them and when I didn't, and they just loved on me. Just absolute, pure love. And they were really the love of God and love of Christ. I, and that's all I would tell you to do. If you know somebody's hurting, seek them out. Give them a big hug. Tell them you're praying for it. Do it. Uh, actually do it and let them know that you prayed for them and then give them a big hug when you see them and say what can I do and they may or may not respond to you I know there were times I did not respond I couldn't respond but I know that the times I said here's what I need people showed up amen